Today on the show, I'm having up Mason Still. He's the CEO of Blueverse. They actually started this company in college, and that wasn't too long ago. So you've had some rapid growth here. What's the annual recurring revenue right now of the business? So we do right around 200000 right now, but we're looking to do at least double, if not triple that by the end of the year. And how many employees do you now have, Mason, and how many users on the platform? Yeah, we have about 23 employees right now split between full-time and part-time. We do a lot of interning through the local schools that we work with. And then as well as we have around 15,000 downloads now coming up on that user mark. Yeah, you got you have a tech platform, which is always nice for high multiples and rapid growth. So uh, what inspired this in, in college? This was with your frat brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. I call it a student or worker fraternity, but yeah, we like to, we were doing a lot of promotions with small business owners and bars in college, and we were working with them. We were doing concert promotions, and so as we were doing those blowing up, we were making good money, but also doing it as a friend group and just realizing, hey, we work really well together. We all, where we all had weaknesses, the other was someone else had a strength, and so we just complimented each other. We've been friends forever, had a lot of trust there, and so really, we were like, man, why don't we do something a little bit bigger? Either we're all going to go have to take jobs and do what we're probably gonna do within our own startup if we just start our own thing. If it's me, like I'm gonna have to go sell something probably because I'm a good salesman. I started selling health life and accident insurance in high school. So it was always in my blood and I was like, well, I'm gonna have to go do that either way for a company. So I might as well build my own product and try and sell that. And that was the same thing for a lot of our guys, just because some of them were IT, computer science, like, like I'm gonna go code for someone, might as well be coding for my own thing or whatever it might be. So as a first time founder, what have been some of those major struggles or hurdles you had to overcome? Yeah. Oh man, there's tons, right? But I think that the most important one is just like the conviction that you have to have in order to do something like this. Because a lot of the times when I see people that have come to with an idea or something, they always seem to like want to start with their solution. So they'll be like, hey, I've got this great grandiose idea and this is actually what we did. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. What's actually the problem that we're trying to solve? And I wish that we had gotten quicker to that point because that's just so common when I see when people are like, hey, I've got this great app idea. I'm going to do this and this, connect friends this way or whatever it is. And you never want to shut people down, but you always just want to say the first thing you say is, hey, what's the problem that we're solving and who are we solving it for? And if we can clearly state that, then we probably have a good way to find our solution out of that. And I think that we did the opposite in a lot of ways because we were just being young and dumb in some ways. What did you find uh, eventually that was the right problem you needed to solve? Yeah, that was driving foot traffic for small businesses. When we were looking at the issues that small businesses were dealing with, it was like, I'm, a, I'm trying to run a fry cook. I'm trying to run a cash register or run my inventory or whatever it is. And now I'm supposed to come up with how to make a TikTok trend or post stuff on Facebook. And I'm posting on all these platforms like people tell me to do, but I'm not actually getting engagement. And then I pay for ads on one of these platforms and people in Juneau or Alaska are looking at my pizza shop. So it was like this huge struggle with just digital marketing for small businesses. So we knew that we had to do something at a local level that made sense because a small business owner, pizza shop owner really doesn't care about like the engagement they're getting in New York if I'm in Texas. So if I'm a pizza shop owner and I really don't have the time to play around with TikTok or getting engagement in the wrong area, how does your app solve my problem? Yeah, so what we allow businesses to do is basically we have this cute little deals app and it, you drop in as a user, it's free to you to use and you explore checking out restaurants. You can see pictures that users have posted, but as well as their deals and promotions. And so those deals and promotions are what we call it. You get in as a user, you're a science hit buyer. You're looking to go eat lunch to go purchase something. And so for the small business, it's really easy. They put all their deals, promotions, happy hours on a schedule, and it's all in one place for the user. They click on your page, get to see all that stuff, as well as content from other people that have won it. So you and your co-founders, are any of you guys uh, software developers by training? Yeah, absolutely. So Drew Pickens, he's one of our co-founders. He's a computer science major. And I will say, if you're going to go be a software company or do app development or anything of that sort, you definitely need to have technical (laughs) co-founders. Just having contracted developers is always going to be really tough because a lot of times where I see people says, hey, I've got $60,000, I want to go build an app or something. And unfortunately, it's just, that's not how it works. You're not just going to spend 60000 and be done. And so I've just seen so many people where they've spent 60, 80, however much thousands of dollars to where they couldn't even get their product to get to launch because they just weren't working with the right contracted firm or anything like that. And when we started, we actually did have to use contracted help. And so we used a company called No Nerds, No Problems, and they were super helpful. It was actually a great company. 
Um, we got to work closely with the founder of that company as they were a little bit newer at that time. But yeah, so we had a little bit better of a situation, but still, and yet now that we've moved to in-house development, things have definitely sped up a lot for us. And coming right out of school, jumping into this business, did you guys raise capital or has it really been bootstrapped the whole way through? And yet raise capital for sure. We used, of course, a safe, the most common thing you're going to see people raising on. And it literally started with, hey, we all had these ideas. We could go do some marketing side work for people and use some of that concert promotion money to get this thing rolling. We also went after some non-dilutive funding uh, early on. We were part of the Texas Tech Accelerator Program. Um, and that was a huge program. They did 25,000 non-dilutive funding. And that was awesome for us. That was really a Kickstarter. And then from there, we actually just started by just going to our parents, grandparents, and just classic family and friends being like, hey, I know this sounds crazy. We have this grand idea. If you just were to give us like <laughs> anywhere from two to $10,000, like I promise we will not waste your money or whatever. And a lot of them were like, yeah, I guess your goal is just see how long it takes you to lose my money. But it was like, no, we're really going to build something. And it's ended up being the case, right? So now you're, you're two years in, right? It's scaling up. So are you going to be scaling outside the state soon or is the focus really to dominate the local market? For sure. The local market inside the states. And right now our real focus is just on Texas. So we launched our product back in February in Lubbock. And so we were in just Lubbock, Texas, which is a small, it's where Texas Tech is, small kind of college town. Not too small, it's fair enough size, but we were working in just Lubbock all of 2023, where we actually launched our product in February 2023. And then in, in January of this year, we started expanding into new markets, focusing still on college towns. So right now we're in Denton, which is home to University of North Texas, College Station, home to Texas A&M, and then also now home to UT, which is Austin, of course, big school there. And how does a product like yours differ from something like Groupon, who also does like those deals for businesses? Yeah, Groupon's an interesting one because they had this huge inflection point. They blew up really quickly. And it's great for a small business owner because the sell was, hey, you come onto our platform. It's the same as us, right? We basically have people on here, high tip buyers looking to go purchase, go do something or whatever. And so if you post here, it's going to be free advertising, but you're also going to be able to you know, make that transaction and get money. But Groupon, you had the list at a 50% loss. So in if I sold horseback riding for $100, I would have to sell that on Groupon for 50 And then Groupon also took 50%. So to my knowledge, if you look at it, businesses had to be almost at a loss of 75% on Groupon. It's not really sustainable. And so for us, we let the businesses just give them free reign on, hey, whatever deals you want to post or what, and they can sell deals as well on our platform. If you want to do that, it's completely up. And we just like to give them that freedom because the actual local environment creates the competitiveness of, hey, I need to put a better deal out rather than us forcing them to pit a certain type of deal out. Yeah, it seems like forcing small businesses to lose money isn't a sustainable business model. Yeah, yeah, of course. The idea was, hey, no one's really purchasing your horseback riding. So we get them to actually purchase your horseback riding. Maybe they'll come and get another horseback riding. But likely, no, I just got a discount of horseback riding and I'm probably done getting horseback riding. But purchasing something at a boutique or a hamburger restaurant's a little different, right? Like if you get a good hamburger and you got that for half off, you're not going to be like, I'm never going to go back. Like it was a good hamburger. So you're probably going to go back. So if one of our listeners wanted to download the app or a business owner wanted to reach out to onboard onto the app, how could they do? So? Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope this is a good idea, but I've always just give out my email and tell people to email me at mason at blueverse.club so or our support at blueverse.club. Both of those emails are always being monitored, mine especially. And so if you reach out with any sort of interest in pitting your business on the platform, especially in, if you're in a Texas town, Texas college town, I would highly implore you to reach out because that's where we're definitely helping big right now. But outside of Texas, you're still going to be able to open uh, the map up and scroll around to Texas and see the deals we have in there. But it is a local deals app. So if you're in another state, we're not going to have probably businesses in your state. But if, you're your tech, if you're in Texas, make sure to check it out. Thank yeah. you, Mason, for coming on the show. And everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to give us a five-star review. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki. We'll see you next time.